Hi everyone, happy, oh well, this is our first time recording in the new year, <laughs> and Don't this isn't coming up until February. We can still say happy new year. Right, yeah, happy new year everyone, welcome back to Girlfriend's Guide Podcast, we are so happy to be back, we are so happy to record, life is just at a nice calm pace for both of us and it hasn't been for a long time, so if you guys are returning guests or audience, thank you guys for supporting us, if you guys are new, welcome to Girlfriend's Guide Podcast, I am your host Tati J. I'm adding the J now to my name. I love it. I I am your host, Ellie. I am so happy to be back. You know, the break, as we continuously say, it was much needed. Sometimes you just got to step back from, you know, some things that you love and you got to take care of yourself and you got to just reset and come back and give all the full energy. And I'm so happy because I know me and Tati, where we are right now, it's just like we can really dive back into the podcast and really give our all so we're so excited to be back and thank you guys for you know continuously supporting us on our page on ig asking us when we're coming back and understanding why we're taking a break um so i'm happy now we can start giving you guys episodes and you guys can start listening to us um every other monday and every other wednesday yes guys so happy to be back um so as you guys can see my background's a little different We're trying something a little new because you guys know me and Ellie are virtual and we're trying to give you better audio, less echoey, less internet like. So I'm in a new room. The aesthetic ain't there yet because we don't know if it's going to work yet. So don't judge that you just see tan in a bag back there and some things on my counter back there. And yeah, so don't judge that because if it works, we'll give the aesthetic after. I'm in the process now also of just kind of like finally taking the time to decorate my room the way I want it to be I've been living downstairs for oh my God, a year now but y'all I haven't I was in school I didn't care like I, I had a bed and the heat worked that's fine I didn't care what it looked like so I'm now getting into that so like I said excuse the aesthetic it will it will go better as the weeks go on but I'm just excited to come back and excited to be back um catch up well for me personally this episode is my big catch up so I don't have anything really to say and oh wait I passed my boards so I'm y'all that like this is what this episode's about but (laughs) I passed my boards thank you thank you um and that's really what this episode's about but Ellie unless you have anything you want to specifically catch up on there's nothing specifically um, that I want to catch up on. I do have some big news, but you know me with my big news. I like to, you know, let it marinate and then I simmer it a little bit and I give you guys the news. So I'm happy to share the news. Give you guys like two to three months, you know, let it marinate. Let God pour the blessings over me and I will definitely share the news very soon but let's just say one of my big goals for 2023 god ended up showing out and giving it to me january of 2023 so i was expecting this blessing of november september of 2023 but here god being like hey you know you deserve this you worked hard enough for it and i'm really seeing the blessings of like me moving out here and then me starting to see exactly you know, what I'm supposed to be doing and like where my next steps are going to be in life. So I can't wait to share with you guys, you know, um, hopefully I might have some content for you guys on it. So we'll see, but you guys will see what I'm talking about, but I'm happy to share soon. (laughs) You guys probably hate me so much for doing this all the time, but I'm sorry. I like to just let it, you know, happen a little bit first. I know it's for certain. And then I'll let you guys know. So I promise I'll share very soon. All I'm going to say is the last time Ellie did this, sis moved to a whole new state. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I already know what it is, as always. Um, but I'm just saying the last time sis did this, she moved to a new state. As you can see, Ellie's not the type of person to like, huh, yeah, I got a cat or I got a dog. Like, her announcements are never subpar. They're never little things. So, just, you know, like she said, give her a good two to three months. You know, and she'll let y'all know when she wants to let y'all know. But, you know, blessings is happening early. Goals is being crossed off early, you know. 
So hopefully blessing that's jar, going on for you guys too. Blessing jar is being filled and it's mm-hmm. all in your So I'm going to continue us. I'm going to continue to receive the blessings from God and continue continuing to add on to my blessing jar. So I'm happy. And second, um, I started a prayer this month, which went amazing. So in the month of December, I think I posted in my close friends. So if you're not in my close friends, I'm sorry. You'll make it there. To be to be honest, I don't even know how to add people on my close friends. I started this close friends a long time ago. So if you're not there, don't take it personal. So I posted on my close friends in December that I really felt like I wanted to start a prayer session. I post on my close friends a lot because I do feel like the people that are on my close friends, I like to share my personal life with them. And everyone on my close friends are so supported. So when I did post it, a lot of people reached out to me and said, yeah, I would love it. You know, I would, I really do need that right now. December went back. I was distracted, but I do feel like it was this distraction of the devil. Just like, girl, you got other things to do it. So I like really prayed to God towards the end of December. It's like, God help me like focus on getting this done. And, um, and I prayed on it and then made the decision to start it um, last week. Um, I don't remember the exact date, but it was last week. And when this video, when this audio comes out, yeah, I won't know. So this was like third week of January. <laughs> so let me be specific. And um, I'm so happy of the outcome. Everyone who said that they were going to join really join. And I really do feel like it was an amazing bond. Everyone shared their experience and just shared positive and motivational um, thoughts. And um, I really do feel like it's a good circle to just really come and really seek God and pray for, um, just pray for anything that you want. So I'm, I'm so happy to continue this and we are continuously going to be doing this every, um, second and fourth Tuesdays. Um, so if you're hearing this, first and third, I think it's first and third. Every other. First and third. So if you hear this and you are interested, just shoot us a message in Girlfriends Guide and I'll send you the Zoom link. And like I said, you don't even have to turn on your um, video. You can change your name if you don't want anybody to know. It's really um, safe space prayer for everybody. And um, yeah, I'm so happy that um, I got to create this space and, you know, um, everyone can do it. I think I created it for women, but hey, I'm you know, if there's men out here that want to join, it's a safe space for everybody. Yes, I was a part of it and um, it was really good. I think every year, most people are like, I want to get a closer relationship with a God. And sometimes it's kind of hard to do that on your own, especially when you're going through a trying time and you could be like doubting God and what he's doing in your life. I think it's good to like hear other people not saying they doubting God, but it's like, you're not alone in that. And let's help each other get on the right path. So I would definitely recommend it. It was definitely a good first session. I definitely can see it growing. And for it being a first session and not everybody in the session knowing each other, most people, I think almost everyone talked, whether it was just saying a thank you or giving what they wanted, you know, in the testimony or like, can you pray for me for this? So um, I would definitely recommend if y'all are looking for a way to get closer to God, you know, maybe this is your sign right here, you know. So definitely, like Ellie said, hit us up um, in our DMs, Girlfriend's Guide underscore podcast on Instagram. And we'll Ellie will go ahead and add you to and send you the information. Um, also another thing guys we are trying very hard not to talk over each other so if you notice that like if I'm talking or Ellie's talking like the other person's not reacting as fast or like um not necessarily laughing through the conversation this one this is when I would say it'd be good to do watch it on YouTube because we're trying our hardest because we're virtual we notice that if we talk over each other a lot it's really hard for you guys to hear so we're trying our hardest not to do that but the facial expressions are still there you know the smiles are still there so youtube may be another way that you guys want to start you know watching up if you guys you know want that you know why aren't they laughing why is it so quiet on tati's and when ellie's talking are they like are they mad at each other none of that (laughs) we're just trying to make this virtual experience as best as it can be for you guys um, with that being said, Ellie, anything else? Let's get into it? it. All right, y'all. Well, where have we been? 
It's been, well, technically when this comes out, miss on me? Two months since we put out an episode by the time this comes out. If y'all listen to this, thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming back. This is our um, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Girlfriend podcast is back. <laughs> we are back. Um, as you guys all know by now, Ellie moved to Dallas end of September. Um, and, you know, with moving, you got to take some time to readjust. You know, that's a big, it's not like, oh, you know, Massachusetts to New York. It's up north to down south, you know, so that takes some time. And I feel like you handle that very well, even with the podcast. Like we took what, maybe one or two episodes off and then that's really it. We tried to get back in, but mostly this most recent break of why it's been really two months since you guys have heard from us was due to me um, studying for my boards. So, excuse me, most of you guys know I was in school to become a pediatric nurse practitioner and I graduated last May, so May 2022. And I have the type of career where just because you graduate, unfortunately, that don't mean shit. (laughs) It just means you have the degree, but now you have to study for your license, which means you have to take this big, anyone who's a nurse, NCLEX, y'all know, lawyers have to take their bar exam. I know people want to be therapists. Shout out to my sis, Ashley. You guys have to take your own exam. So a lot of jobs require this. So I have to take an exam to basically say okay she passed school and she knows what she's doing now you can give her the license to work um and i took it on september 30th which was a friday and i didn't pass and i felt like i handled that honestly pretty well i didn't really break down because i feel like i kind of knew um i didn't really break down or like oh my god i'm a failure i mean was it hard to tell my loved ones kind of because i like no one made me feel bad about it but it was more so people at work who kind of saw me go through the journey of school and knew that oh my gosh she finally graduated she's probably because i took three weeks off of work to really buckle down and study so that you can put two and two together oh she's probably gonna take it so then when i i had work literally the next day after i took it I didn't know my results right then and there, even though you're supposed to, because I just got on. I'm not gonna lie. I got really, really nervous. And I told everyone, Ellie doesn't even know this. I told everyone I double clicked. I didn't double click. I exited out on purpose because I thought I was going to get an email that day. My dumb ass, you get the email four or five days later. And I didn't know that. So I was like, I can't tell people this shit. They're going to be like, bitch, why why are you stupid? (laughs) Why didn't you wait? But I was so, I couldn't. I was so nervous to look. And thank God I didn't. Because I think if I found out in that moment, I don't think I would have handled it as well. I think having a couple of days, the days of waiting didn't give me anxiety. It just was just like, it gave me time to prepare for what I knew. Go ahead, Ellie. I see you trying to say something. Go ahead, sis. I said, wow. Not like, wow. Yeah. The fact, like, I'm judging you, girl. You have to do what you do. You have to do at that moment. It's just like, wow. I'm surprised that you weren't anxious leading to the day of finding out. Because Lord knows me. I would have been like, bon Dieu, Jesus. <laughs> Every day, like, so anxious until I find out. I do, I do applaud you. Like, you did handle the whole situation really well and i know like we we talked and i was just like tati just like have faith i know that um you're gonna do well again and i think leading up to it you already knew what it was you already knew you weren't gonna pass like you already Mm -hmm. this was like the practice exam for you to get an idea of what the exam was and then you were gonna go in the second time like the second time around i'm like this girl's gonna pass and then Mm -hmm. you told me when you saw your results you knew how far you were from passing. So I'm just like, obviously she was this far from, she was this close to passing. So of course the second time around, she was gonna pass. I knew you handled handle it well. Um, the anxiety you did feel leading up to the second exam is to me was normal because it's just like, you're anxious again because it's the doubt of like, what about I don't pass again? Mm-hmm. And then you handled the, every like every aspect of it so well like mm-hmm. that kind of anxiety i cannot do it <laughs> i cannot do it like i applaud you seriously girl i do applaud you 100 percent. thank you thank you 
Um, and like I said, like, I don't know why I thought I was going to get an email that day. And then when I left, I was like, and I literally, first person I called was my best friend, Trisha. I was like, Trisha, um, I didn't look because I couldn't look. I'm just going to wait for the email. So I'm on the phone with her. I'm, I'm just like refreshing my email, refreshing. I'm like, so I don't think I'm getting this email today. <laughs> so I walked back into the place and I'm just like, so my anxiety took over and I didn't look at it because um, I thought I was going to get email. Can you tell me if I passed or failed? They're like, well, we te- we don't we can't even see that. We're just there to make sure you don't cheat, blah, blah, blah. So I called the boards myself. And I was like, so I know I literally just took it. So I know you probably can't see my results. But like if I call tomorrow, like, can I like will y'all tell me? She goes, Well, technically, we're not allowed to, blah, 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 but she'll get an email in the max, like in two weeks, but most likely three to five um days. And I was like, okay, whatever. So then I'm telling everyone at work the same story. I double click. I was anxious. It froze, blah, blah, blah. Then I get the email a couple of days later while I'm at work. And in, in the subject line, it goes, unsuccessful attempt. And I'm just like, first of all, that's <laughs> not what you should be putting in the subject line. Because what if I couldn't, ha- what if that was my 13th reason? What if I couldn't handle that? And you just see it like that? Like, cal- calm down. Y'all need to figure out a different approach to that. I need like, to talk to the board of nurse practitioner exam yeah that's not okay it's not okay we need a new subject line don't hurt don't don't try to put people's feelings like that because already everyone's anxious for the result exactly and then it tells me oh i failed by 20 points and this this test is 175 questions 25 of the questions don't 15 of the questions don't count Um, because it's just like throwaway questions. So I'm like, okay, 20 points is literally not like 20 questions. 20 points is like most likely less than 10 questions I got wrong that made me fail. So then I was like, you know what? It's okay, whatever. So then I start studying back again in November, getting my notes together. And it's not until I want to say three weeks before my test, my anxiety just starts to kind of build up. Like we recorded one episode in December that came out. And I want to say right after that, my anxiety just was like, ha ha, you failed once and you thought you was going to do this again with no anxiety. You thought. And when I tell you, I've had anxiety, I want to say since college of junior year, when I started clinicals for nursing, that's when my anxiety started. That's when my anxiety really started because I had a bitch of a precept instructor. To this day, I hate her. I don't even hate people. And hate is a strong word, but she is the closest to a person that I hate, that woman. And she started my anxiety. And when I tell you this anxiety wasn't just like a heavy feeling on your chest. Or for me, I always say it's like a tornado's in my chest. I feel like my heart is swirling. Like I just feel like that. And it's not necessarily beating, it's swirling. Or like headaches, like I get tension headaches, my neck starts to hurt. It was that. And when I tell you guys like, I could not stop gagging and I could not stop vomiting. Like every time it's like, okay, I would like prepare for the day. You have to get through this today. Then I see how many pages it is, how many chapters. And I'm just like, I just start gagging and it led the gagging led to throwing up. Every time I would take a shower, I think my body just knew like, okay, if you're going to throw up, you're running water, a big open space, there's a drain. So every time I would get into like the shower, I would gag, 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 gag. And then finally it would come out and I would throw up to the point where like, I literally had to start skipping showers because that feeling, I already hate, everyone knows I hate feeling nauseous. I hate throwing up. I just hate that feeling. But now it was intensified 10 times worse because now it's dealt with anxiety. Then it's the headaches and then it's the muscle tension in my neck and shoulders. And everyone who knows me, I have really big boobs. So my neck and shoulders already hurt in general. So now to add that on top of it. And then every time I would throw up, I would come out of the shower and I'll start crying and then I'll have a mental breakdown. So it literally came to the point of we're going to shower every other day because you can't go through this every single day. And I know, especially now that the whole be Monk thing came out, she don't take showers every day and people calling her nasty, blah, blah, blah. Y'all can say that about me if you want, but I know, especially when people, and I'm not going to say I was depressed, who knows? I'm not in that field to say that, but there are people who, when they get to a certain level of depression, they don't shower. And I never necessarily understood that or they don't do their hair. Guys, I did not touch my hair. Mm-hmm. And 
people like I usually wash my hair every two weeks. I didn't touch my hair for a little bit over a month. Like this straightened hair, I got done second full week of January. Before then, the last time I touched my hair was the last couple of days of November because I just couldn't. The energy wasn't there. Wow. And I just feel like no one talks about this coming from someone like, oh, it's a test. Like, oh, bitch, you failed and, you, and you're going to pass. Like, But it's just so much riding on it when you have people counting on you. Right. And you don't want to let anyone else down. Right. And you expressing how you felt. And although you said that um, you wouldn't call it depression, but depression, I don't have the certification for this. So whoever is certified can speak on this. But depression comes in any form. And a lot of times we hit rock bottom and signs of depression comes on, comes, comes out, but we are just like, okay, this is not depression. This is just me hitting rock bottom and me just being overwhelmed. But it are, they are signs of depression. A hundred. They come in different forms completely. Cause I know when I'm anxious, I completely shut down. Like, People are calling me. I'm not picking up. I just want to be by myself in a more toxic way because I'm my mind's my mind's running like a hundred miles per hour, and I'm thinking of all negative thoughts. And I, I completely understand with the whole shower because most of the time it's you wanting to lay in bed and just lay there and sleep, like lay there and just rest and not get up. You don't have the energy at all to do it. You don't want to do your hair. Um, signs of depression also are just like you, you don't want to go out with your friends at all. So just like everyone, those are my specific signs of just like when I'm feeling so down, I don't want to go out with anybody. Don't, if you call me, I'm not picking up. I just shut down a hundred percent and people who know you know your signs. And someone who knows me really well is my mother. My mom knows 100%. If I'm going through it, I'm locked in my room. Don't call me. Don't talk to me. Like, I'm just shutting down. And then when she, she knows how to handle it, handle it really well, when she sees me like that, she's like, hey, I just want to check in on you to see if you really are doing well. And she just lets me be. She just lets me know that she's there for me and just like, my mom always says, don't stress, don't stress, because she knows I like to stress easily about things. So it's just like they all come in different signs. But um, I know as long as you try your best to um, handle it and cope with it, I know that is very important. But um, I know someone listening is definitely going through situations in their life that are similar to that. And they also have these signs of um, depression. But I do want to let them know that like they do come in different signs. And I know you have a therapist, Tati, and like you reach out to your therapist, you have someone to talk to. So it's just like, I don't want them to dismiss, oh, this is not depression or this is not something serious, but also acknowledge your feelings and know that, hey, I'm not my best. I'm not doing well. And I need to either find someone, find a friend that I can talk to that will understand what I'm going through or find a therapist that is certified and that can guide me through like the whole process. No, a thousand percent. And even like I said, in that moment, I was kind of like, oh, this is not depression. It wasn't until after I passed my birthday. I want to say maybe a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, the Shade Room posted this article and it was talking about how depression shows up differently in black women. Oh. And one of the signs was just like, oh, okay, a lot of times depression in black women is misdiagnosed for anxiety or it's misdiagnosed for just, oh, you're just overly stressed or you have GI symptoms like diarrhea, like nausea, like throwing up. And I was just like, God, mm -hmm. like, so this is what I was going through. Okay. This was my body reacting to depression and 
And there's situational depression. I feel like sometimes people think depression, if you're not going through it for like three months, it's like, okay, you're not depressed. But there's situational depression where a certain aspect in your life right now is causing you to be in a state of depression. And like Ellie said, depression looks different from everybody. Like when I think of depression back then, at least it used to be like, Hey, people who don't go out of, don't get out of bed. People who don't shower, people who don't do their hair, people who don't eat or overeat, things like that. And it's just kind of like, I think depending on the type of lifestyle you live, you may not always be able to, not get out of bed because functional depression is real. You're functioning, you're going through the normal routines of life, but you're still depressed. And I feel like looking back, that was what I was going through, but I didn't even have the time to sit in it to think about it. Mm. It just had to be, okay, well, you know you throw up and you know it's because of this test and you're anxious. So what are we going to do? We're going to not throw up. So what does that mean? We're not going to take a shower every day because that is going to trigger you to throw up and then then you're going to have a mental breakdown and then boom, that's hours you're wasting crying when you could be studying. Like that's how I thought about it. If it wasn't studying, it wasn't worth it. I'm not going to sit here for four hours to do a wash day. Why? Because I'm going to study. Mm-hmm. I'm not, girl, when I tell you the amount of money Uber Eats made off of me in the month of December, mm-hmm. because I'm like, I'm literally not even joking, probably four to five times um, out of the week I was ordering Uber Eats because who's going to go upstairs to cook? Why? Because mm-hmm. I could be studying. Yeah. Like, I'm not wasting my, I was not doing anything. Like, there was a time where I went outside and I was like, Wow. Like, when was the last time yeah. I w- left my house? Like, yeah. wow, it's winter time. It's cold. Like, I forgot because I haven't left my room, let alone my house, in so many days. My stepdad mom's like, oh, we don't see you anymore. I'm like, yeah, I'm studying. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm away. And I don't think that was healthy at all. So this is not to say just because I passed, it was worth it. I just feel like. Like Ellie said, take that time to acknowledge your feelings. And I wish I would have done that a lot more, but it kind of just felt like I was racing against the clock. And like, I always say, like when people talk about going through stages, like I want to get very, very clear what I'm about to say, not suicidal, didn't want to end my life, but did I want to pause my life? Yes. If there was a magic book and like that movie click with, um, Adam Sandler, where you could just click it and it pause. If I could pause and go to sleep Mm -hmm. and wake up when my body was ready and my mind was ready to wake up, that's what I needed. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, life doesn't pause for you. And I feel like a lot of people are afraid to say that because they don't want to be labeled as suicidal or crazy. But it's like, I wanted my life to pause just for me. I I, I completely understand. I completely understand that. Um, I think a lot of times something that we don't talk about is what you mentioned about um, situation depression. I think once in a while there's hardships and obstacles that come our way. And for some of us, we have a good way of dealing with it if you know yourself, but with others, they don't know how to deal with their feelings. Me, I know my issues. I know that whenever a situation, depression hits me, what I do is, like I said, I shut down, don't pick up calls, I don't go out. But you have to know how to cope with it. You have to know how to handle your feelings. For me, it's crying. Crying, letting it all out. Crying and letting it all out. Another thing that really helps me is you know, I constantly work with my therapist on this because I have my anxiety. I say this, my anxiety continues to get worse and worse and worse. As much as I try, I continuously pray about it, um, but it just keeps getting worse. Is now is just saying um, Bible scriptures that I know by, like by memory, um, you know, like Psalm 130, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my cry. Like things that literally calm me, down and like finding little methods that calm me down like once in a while if you guys see me out if you ever see me out and i feel anxious you'll start seeing me counting with my fingers now and like these things really calm me down if i'm really feeling low i'll just lay there and i'm just like one, two, three, and i'm counting and i'm counting but you have to find what works for you because you went through that in that situation how do you know there's not something that's going to come in three months 
where you go through the same thing again. So Mm -hmm. when you do go through these situations, you got to learn how to deal with your feelings and you got to learn if this was to happen again, how am I going to deal with it? This is life. Life always life. So it's just Mm -hmm. like, we're always going to have these seasonal depression. We're always going to have these situation depression, but it's like, how are you going to deal with it next time? You know that when you do have the situation, depression, you can't shower, you gag, you, all these certain, all these things you know about yourself. It's just like, how do I deal with that next time if it was to happen again? Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's very important. And then you knowing yourself is just you trying to figure out how to, um, how to cope with all those feelings that you always have when you go through those um, situation depression. Yeah, I thousand percent agree. And now that I want to say I'm out of it, it's now looking back because I'm not going to hold you like I and I don't even like to use this word. I felt so crazy. I felt like, bitch, you're throwing up for what? A test? Mm -hmm. Like, like, like what's going on with you? Like what? Like you can't control your body. Like what is really going on with you? Like I felt like no one. It, I feel like no one could understand. And I feel like if I tell people this, they're gonna be like, "What?" Like it's a test. But I just feel like, especially now in this generation, and this is one of the things that irks me. Like yes, you are able to be successful without a degree, without spending money on tuition, but do not take away from the people, especially those who choose to go back after college to pay on their own for that degree, do not take away the stress that that puts on someone. Do not take away that accomplishment because at the end of the day, essentially this test in my eyes in that moment was my life because I am a nurse. I'm trying to elevate my career. And it's like, to me, this, what is, there's no other route. Granted, I could still always be a nurse because I have that, but it's like, this is what I work to. So it's like, it's not just a test. Essentially it's my past that I, that led me to here. It's my future. It's everything. So those 175 questions had me in a chokehold because it was way more than that. It carried so much more weight. And that's another thing where I'm trying to understand. It's like, why allow that to carry so much weight? Like I'm still working through, everything that I went through with that, which I'm so proud of that I'm able to just not, like you said, because in three months, God forbid, like it's life. You never know what's going to bring you back to that point in that you were. And it's like, you have to be able to not necessarily be prepared, but know that you're able to get through it and try to do it, uh, go through it again, the better way. Even though this was filled with anxiety and all this stuff, Overall, my study method this time worked way better than last time. So it's kind of like next time I get into the situation, what can I do better? And I passed, I took my test, the second test on um, New Year's Eve. And I was like, God, this is literally either going to make or break not one year, but two. <laughs> so we need to get this together. And I went in and I was nervous and it was just like certain questions like, okay, I don't know this. I don't know this. And then I had to go to the bathroom because I'm just like, God, the anxiety is like my legs started shaking. I was like, nope, we can't do this. We're only halfway through. I got up, went to the bathroom, calmed myself down, was doing. And the first time I took it, it was like I finished with over an hour left and you have three hours to take it. This second time I finished it with less than 30 minutes left. And I think another thing with anxiety when it comes to tests, it's like, you want to be done so bad mm-hmm. that you're just like, I want to rush through this shit. I just want to click, click, click. Yep, I know it. Boom. I'm not going to read carefully. I want to get it done so bad. Versus this time, I was just kind of like, yo, you got to take your time. Mm-hmm. Flag the questions you don't. If you're able to go through the whole test again, okay, great. But then once I realized I wasn't, I was like, okay, let me just go through the ones I flagged. And mm-hmm. then they always tell you, don't change your answers. Then I found myself changing answers. And I was like, Lord, am I about to fail again? Mm. And I was like, God, if it's not on my spirit to change the answer, please don't let me click that button to change it. And it said I passed and my hands started shaking. Because mm. I was like, this is not real. Like, it's like my body went cold and numb and my hands started shaking. I was just like, oh my God, am I done with this forever? Am yeah. I really done with this forever? And then I walked out and they're just like, okay, you have to sign out. I was like, bitch, I can't. My <laughs> hand is shaking. Like, I just want to walk out and be done. 
I left the testing center. Then I realized I left my jacket inside. I, I was just so, oh my goodness, am I done? And the week of my test, the Monday of, I broke, had a big breakdown. The, the biggest one I've had. And literally got on my knees and was just crying and praying to God. Like, God, literally it is, I'm on my knees. It's at your feet. Like, take this from me because I can't. And then I wrote a prayer and put it in my prayer jar until this day when I still can't believe I passed, I read that prayer because I'm just kind of like, it was in this moment I truly let it go to God and he had me. And honestly, once I passed, I still had anxiety and I still was gagging for a week after. And that just shows me like, it's really, as much as people say, your emotions and your body go hand in hand. And it's like, it's not a light switch as much as you think, okay, the stress is over and now my body can relax. Your body still is taking time to adjust because it's been such in a period of fight or flight, such in a period of high stress. It only knew how to function in that. So now that I didn't have the stress, I'm thinking I'm going to go back to normal. No, my body still was getting back to normal itself. And y'all, I'm going to tell you God is good because it, it, I went to church today for the first time in months. And then he was, and then the thing was just like, <clears throat> um, ask your neighbor, how did you get here? And he's like, as many times as I'm just like, but God, because if it wasn't for him, I would have been dead. But God did this, but God did that. And literally, <laughs> but God, because not even to help me pass this test, but to keep my sanity those last couple of weeks was something that I really thank him for because I've never experienced anything like that in my life ever. Mm-hmm. So y'all, that's where I've been. Oh, I'm so proud of you. I'm really proud of you. Thank you. I, I saw mm-hmm. you go through it and um, I saw that you continuously pushed through and you continuously trust God so God can deliver and God could do what he had planned for you. So this is this is your this is your blessing to receive. I'm so ready for this blessing. I'm so ready for this blessing. And even then, sometimes I feel like what we forget is just like even through the darkness, it's a blessing because as much as I was going through it and I was like, oh my God, like I can't do this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yo, just a couple of months ago, not too long ago, you were praying to be in this position of you graduated and now you're studying. So even though it's so hard and even though it's bringing all this turmoil to your life, you prayed for this moment. It may not be the moment you thought it was going to be, but it's still a blessing. And sometimes I feel like it's so hard to recognize that even through the darkest times, you're still living in God's favor. You're still living in his blessing. So, and like, I know a couple of months from now when I start my job, I'm going to be stressed out. I'm going to be crying. That may be the position where I go back and I pray to God, not that situational depression, but that means I got over the hump of studying. So this is another a blessing in disguise. So I think now I'm going in with that mindset that trying to find that silver lining when it doesn't seem like there is one will help hopefully the next time I find myself in this type of situation. Mm. I think through these process, it's amazing to, um, to always see how every time I get myself into a situation, I'm like, I, I doubt and I forget about what like God had did before for me. And I'm like, I swear God be laughing at me like, girl, like you don't remember what I did for you. Like, are you really doubting me right now? Like you really, you playing in my face. Like, don't do that. (laughs) And um, whenever I end up really just like, all right, yeah, he did this for me before and he gonna do it again. So then I completely put my trust in him and I just see him work, man. And I see him show out and I see him make a way and I continuously, 100%, I think I was telling Tati, I'm like, I don't know how people don't yep. put problems onto God. Like, God, here's my, I literally now, like, the older I get, like, my relationship with God is building and building. I, I really don't know how people don't be like, here, God, here's my problems. Like, help me figure it out. Like, that's my, I got my therapist. 
But I really got like God is really my therapist, like a hundred percent. That's who I I go. I have my therapist like on Earth, <laughs> and God is on Earth too. But like, um, but He's like that person I go to, and I really just like pour all my issues to, and really see Him work through. And I obviously doubt is normal. Um, sometimes I doubt, but I'm like, I laugh at myself. I'm like, girl, like how many times you really be going through it? And he like shows up every time. So let's try this again. Let's put our trust in him and see him come through. So, um, I think that's what you, you did in your situation. And, um, it was, it was amazing. Um, watch you. It was amazing watching you go through it in the sense of mm-hmm. like, I saw that, although you had all the anxiety and like stress of it, you really just like, um, really trusted God through the process so he can just like do what he had to do. And, um, yeah, I think that was my biggest lesson in just letting go and letting God, like the only other time I feel like I was in a situation where I was just like, God, it's you baby. Cause I can't is when I was going through my breakup and that was such a long time ago. And like I said, unfortunately, the older I've gotten, my anxiety has worsened. So even back then, I wasn't going through this whole, the anxiety was more emotional versus now it's becoming more physical and emotional. So I never had to handle it in that sense. So I think now more than ever, it's just like, yep, God, take it because I can't, mm -mm, I'm not doing this again. (laughs) I really need to, to trust you and let you handle it because if it's up to me, my body would kill me. Like if it was up to me to handle this, I, there's no way because already with you handling it, this is how my body was reacting. So for it to only be on me, no, I'm okay. I'm not the toughest soldier. I'm good. I'm gonna be back. God, do what you need to do, baby. It's not me. Oh yeah, I'm not the toughest soldier out here, God. Um, like sometimes I just be just here and I'm just like, so how are people really on this earth not having a therapist and not coming to God? Because yeah, I don't. Think- right. At this adult life, at this adult it, age, it could not be me. Could it be if me? You come to me straight up in my face and you tell me, yo, like, I don't, I don't got no problems that I really deal with and, you know, life is good. I'd be like, wow, like, what, where, what world do you live in? That's great. Here I am every That's time. I'm like, all right, this therapy session, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I think I'm okay. I need therapy crying like, damn, another thing I got to heal from. Yeah. So it's just like, I, I encourage always, always, every time I talk to someone, I always, every, I always encourage others to like, yo, yo, go find your therapist, find who works mm-hmm. for you. And, um, you know, you know, try to get the help you need. Yeah. And one last point I wanted to make about all this is that I know a lot of times when you're going through a season of doubt or depression or anxiety, you're just kind of like, yo, God, what is the purpose? What is the point? And I know literally, Ellie, you remember when we were talking a couple of days ago, I literally wrote the date, January 17th, me and Ellie were talking. I don't know what we were talking about. We were talking about God. But then I was like, God said, stop asking me why. And I'm literally, I'm looking at it right now because we always want to ask God, why? Why am I going through this? And it's not for us to know unless he wants to reveal it to us. And throughout this whole entire thing, I was like, God, wh- why? why why, would you make me feel? Like, what? what is the purpose? What is delaying my license for the next couple of months going to do for me? Like, how is this going to serve me in any way? And it wasn't until after the fact. And it's like, my study journey was very hard because the only people that I really made friends with during my program, she didn't, she graduated, but she had to finish her clinicals. So she wasn't ready to sit and study. So I was by myself with that. And I'm not necessarily a lone studier. I do better with a partner. And I was Googling, 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 trying to find, you know, pediatric nurse practitioners, tips and tricks. And I found some, but it wasn't as much as I found for people who do family nurse practitioners. And to be honest, not saying you're you're white, you're Indian, you're whatever. I'm going to take the advice, but I saw no one that looked like me take it. And all the advice is like, oh, you can study for this test in three to four weeks. Clearly that didn't work for me. And it's just, it was so hard to find direction. 
And if I found direction, like I said, it was for another technically group, not pediatrics, but family, or it was direction from five years ago when things have changed. And it's just like, I where, like, where are the resources for people like me who just need help? And I was just like, I told myself, once I pass, I'm going to make a series on my Tati's testimonies. And I don't, I'm not even the type of person, I don't like to, my social media is not about me being a nurse. I always said that I'm not that type of nurse. I don't like it. It's just not me to, I'm Nurse Tati and da da da. No. But in this situation, I'm going to make plenty of videos on where to start, plenty of videos on what to do after you fail, because no one talks about doing this again. No one talks about this failure. And I remember when I was talking to my medical director, because I want to apply at my job for nurse practitioner role, she was like, So where are you at? And I was like, Honestly, like, I failed. And she was just like, you know what, da, 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 it's okay. And she was like, I filled my boards by one point. Wow. And I'm just like, where are these stories? Why are we hiding them? Granted, not saying to flash your failure, but why does it always have to be seen as a failure? Like my therapist says, it's failing forward because no matter what, you may not have passed what you wanted in the moment, but you learned something new that's going to lead you to pass in the future. So I'm taking my experiences. I am making multiple videos talking about how to study for this test, things like that, but also it's like what to do when you're failing and how to overcome that and your anxiety. And I feel like maybe that was the purpose in all of this because God knows how hard it was for me Mm -hmm. to find someone to help guide me, which still I really didn't. So maybe I meant to guide someone else. Right. Exactly. And um, as you're talking, I I thought about what you said about I'm not the strongest soldier. And sometimes we ask God, why, why, why? But it's so funny because at the end of it, you are his strongest soldier, a hundred percent. Because a lot of times when I go be, when I go through things, it's after I'm like in the moment I'm just so weak, I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm just like God, I can't take it anymore. And then when it's all done, I'm like, yo, <laughs> oh, okay, like don't play with me. Like I did that. I did that. Is that was me? I was. Mm. I ain't a weak one. I don't play it. Don't play with me. Um, so it's just like after when we go all these, we go through all these trials and like tribulation obstacles. You look back and like, man, like yo, the devil thought I was really weak, but yo, I'm actually really strong. I'm actually one of the soldiers. I don't want him to pick me. I don't want him to pick me to go through those um, battles. Yeah. Come on, God. I don't want you to pick me. Okay. I I, but, I, I am a weak one, but yes. I know at the end of it, I am going to win the battle. Like I am the strongest. I am not the weakest link at the end no, of it. I'm not. During the process, I might feel like the weakest link, but at the end, I do come on top, baby. Like period. I do come period. on top. Like, literally, now that you mentioned the devil, there was literally a point in my multiple meltdowns. I got. I literally was sitting up crying. I was like devil stop playing with me (laughs) like we're not about to do it and i only do that when i feel like the defeat is so near and i'm just like i can't like i said only other time i really remember myself doing that was through the breakup where it was just like Mm. y'all you need to i can't take this but i'm not about to give up you need to stop because you got the wrong one like i literally talk at him because it's like I know this is what you're trying to do. And I have to let you know that it's not going to work. I have to, I have to talk to you because I'm not stupid. I know this is you. So let me address you because you're cowardly hiding behind my anxiety and making me throw up and making me do all of this. But I'm calling you out by name. Stop moving with me. You know, I'm not it the sounds word. crazy. In the process of doing it, you feel so crazy because there's even times I'm like literally yelling at Whatever, like when you just feel like you can't take anymore, I do find myself like y- literally yelling at God. I'm like towards like the end of it, and I'm just like, God, I'm not doing with this with you either. Like <laughs> to get it together. What is yeah. it? like? And you're in your room talking, and you're like, yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> what is this crazy? But I'm just like, no, for real, like God, like what is this? Like I'm not taking. Like I'm giving you like this amount of time get it together because i'm tired i am tired i'm tired i need this to stop figure it out 
because we mm-hmm. I'm tired. Like I we're not doing this. But he does hear yeah. he does hear our cry. And I'm telling you, there's been there's been fights, man. I'd be like, this time I've been punching up. <laughs> You're really mad. I punched the I I I literally remember myself punching the air sometime because it's just mad. Like, what is happening, yo? And like what you said, happening? why? Why? There is no mm-hmm. clear answer in front of me. I'm just like, I have no answers. I'm frustrated. I'm pissed. Figure this out. Figure this out. It's it. Everyone goes through these trials and they go through these tests. And I really, sometimes I like, I, I, I do this devotion and it's just like, when you pray, how do you picture God? And I'm so I never thought of that. And I swear, um, when I go through these trials, sometimes I feel like I picture God just like sitting there and just, you know how there's like this comedian girl that does like these videos about the angels and God. And, yeah, she, yeah. and whenever I go through these tests, and I'm giving myself a hard time. I literally picture God just like sitting there and watching myself give me stress. Like I'm giving myself stress. And he's I just see God like, laughing at me. Like I literally see just chilling on his stone. Like this yeah, girl, what's she gonna learn? I literally do picture him laughing and it's just like, girl, calm down. It's coming. It's coming. Wait. Are you ready? Are you ready? And this brings um, I know it's um you know, what, what happens in our prayer circle, I do want to keep it there, but there was someone in our prayer circle that said this, um, um, during our prayer session last Tuesday. And she Mm -hmm. said that a lot of times we order things from Fashion Nova, we order things from Pretty Little Mm -hmm. Things and we have the tracking, right? Okay. It's coming on Tuesday. And I'm here like, especially when I have a vacation to go to, don't play with me. Little thing. I want that thing on Tuesday. If my trip's on Mm -hmm. Wednesday, it reminds me of Miami when we did the bulk order. It <laughs> <laughs> was literally that same week. Our order came mm-hmm. on Monday. Tati made me order her things because she wanted to make yeah. sure it's on time. So I know it's coming. And it's the same thing when we're like praying for certain things. It's just like, we don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know when God's actually going to like, you know, give us that blessing or whatever we're praying for. And we're literally putting ourselves through stress. For what? Mm-hmm. For what? And it's just like. it's coming. It's coming, and it's just like we gotta be, we gotta be ready. And um, I just try to tell myself whenever like there's certain things that happen, I'm just like, girl, don't stress, don't stress. He's never, he's never disappointing you before. He's never. And if he mm-hmm. is gonna disappoint me, there is a why I'm gonna have like a why, why God. Mm-hmm. And I know that mm-hmm. there's a purpose through it all, and it's just like you have to conv- truly, totally, and continuously try to convince yourself because you will have doubt and those do- doubts are not from god himself but it's literally just like yo the devil's working a hundred percent those anxiety that's the devil working like i literally say this a hundred percent this is why i i find myself praying more because i find that's what helps me is like those anxieties i'm having i know it's just like the devil knows my my weak spot Weaknesses, like, those yeah. are- my weakness and um i need to find my strength i need to find my what's my strong weapon i guess i can say and i for me my strong weapon is literally like i have to i have to pray like you know people do meditation and you have to let your mind rest and mm-hmm. me one we're gonna cry we're gonna cry yep we're gonna cry yep when it's praying, I'm gonna cry and bawl my eyes out while I'm praying to God. I'm gonna cry. It's gonna be tears. Yep. We're gonna fight. We're gonna, while we pray, we're gonna fight. It's gonna be that relief. It's gonna be that mm-hmm. relief. That's my weapon. That's a hundred. Because once after I'm praying, I, I play gospel music, I cry, and then I pray. And we cry while we're praying. But that's my, that's my strength. That's my weapon. That's how I fight yeah. the anxiety that comes. And there's no other way. Like, and going back to what we were talking in the beginning about what you were going through, you have to find your weapon. You have to find your mm-hmm. strength of when you fall into this situation. How can you get up? What is your weapon yep. what can help you? Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. Oy, bonze. Thank you, God. Ooh. Like, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, you guys, for listening. Thank yeah. you. 
you know, I hope you I hope you guys take something away from this, at least whether it's like knowing that you're not alone, knowing that it is normal and then finding, like Ellie said, your weapon in order to prepare yourself for the next battle and get yourself out of it. We got this, you guys. This Girlfriend's Guide community, we got this. Um, if you guys need to vet, talk about anything, definitely hit us up in our DMs. Um, we are here to listen. We are here to help. And like I said, you guys are not alone. Like, we yeah. all go through it. You're we not alone. You are not alone. Not and I think alone. it's just finding the support. Like, we're here. I don't know you. I don't know what you're going through. So, <laughs> like, if you want to... Come on our um, direct mm-hmm. message and just like, yo, I'm going through this. I heard what you guys talked about on the last episode. I don't know what to do. What are some things I can do? Like, we're not clinicians in, like, the aspect of this, but at least we can give you some tips on, like, hey, this is what we do. We can yeah. Discuss, um, you know. And I don't, don't feel Tati embarrassed, and I, too. Yeah. And Tati and I found – both of our therapists on a certain on um, this specific website. So we're happy mm-hmm. the website with you. Um, we're here to support. We're here for you to like just lean on us for any support. So yeah, life is really lifing out here, and every- it takes a village. It takes, it takes a village to raise a baby. It takes a village to survive. And then this whole is like this this whole like notion of I don't need nobody. I'm on my own. That's such a horrible and lonely life to live. Mm-hmm. Like, don't... It takes a community of people to really get you to a place where you feel like you can go on. And that is okay to need someone. It is okay to be... To, to say, I need help. I need a community. I need someone. It is more than okay to voice that. 100%. Mm. I agree. I do. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming to our comeback episode. Yeah. And like I said, this is coming out in February before Valentine's Day. So happy Valentine's Day. You know, Valentine's I hope you guys coming. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys, you know, um, spend it well, spend it with your friends or spend it with your significant other. Spend it by yourself. It is okay to be single on Valentine's Day because your girl's single on Valentine's Day, you know. So it is okay. You are beautiful. And you know, have a great rest of your week. Have a great Valentine's Day. And thank you guys for supporting us and understanding that sometimes, like I said, I needed to pause life and I couldn't, but I had to pause every other aspect of my life that I could. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys for allowing me to pause to get my mental right and to come back and share my story and, you know, to give you guys what Girlfriend's Guide is all about. Yes, thank you guys for tuning in. You'll catch us on um, every other Monday. We're doing our best. We're trying to come back. Mm -hmm. And you know, be consistent. So we're happy mm-hmm. to continuously um, just you know give out episodes and give us our give you guys our tips and advices that we have. So stay tuned for our next episode. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs>